All right, now let's uh, calculate our takeoff and landing performance for the aircraft to make sure we've got enough runway at our departure and our destination points to, to get us safely into the air and back on the ground. So this is section five of the POH again, the performance section. So let's move into that first. We'll get out of weight and balance and back into section five And we'll start with the takeoff uh, charts. There they are. Now we'll flip it right side up. Now notice right off the bat that this first takeoff chart is going to have us at our max weight at 2,400 pounds, but we just calculated ourselves just shy of 22. So let's make sure we're using the 2,200 chart for our takeoff distance. All right, so first thing to, know, to, to figure out is our pressure altitude on departure, okay? So let's look at the nav log because we can figure this out anyways, right? Our, the airport we're departing from, College Park, the field elevation's 48 feet, okay? We found out that the altimeter setting is 2988. So let's figure out the pressure altitude off of that. The first step is gonna be to figure out the difference between the standard of 2992 and the reported of 2988, right? Yeah, 2988. It's only 0 .04. Now we apply 100 to that, I'm sorry, 1,000 to that to get 40 feet. So think about this. The altimeter is reporting 2988. It's just a little bit less dense than standard. So that would indicate that you're just a little bit higher than your field elevation. So we're going to add 40 to the field elevation of 48 to get our pressure altitude of 88. It's basically sea level. So we'll use that sea level figure on the POH right here. So we're at the 2200 uh, weight category <clears throat> and we're using sea level because we're you know not even at 100 feet in pressure altitude. And then it's just about looking at our temperatures. The METAR is going to help with that too. It says the temperature is currently 20 degrees Celsius, so it's right there. Now that's going to indicate our total to clear an obstacle needed of 1,375 feet. But let's see if we need to make any changes to that. So let's look at the notes. We're using that short field technique that we've talked about. We don't need to do any, uh, any anything different with the mixture because we're below 3,000 feet elevation. Ah, decreased distances for, for headwind. Let's see what the wind's doing. Lo and behold, winds are calm. So any amount of wind would cause us to, first of all, think about which runway we want to use and then to apply a little bit of a decrease to the amount of distance that we would use depending on how much of that wind is a headwind component to help us out on takeoff. So we'll leave that off and we'll just use our figure that we computed before at 1,375 as our takeoff performance. So takeoff to clear 50 foot obstacle is 1,375 feet and then we can move on to the landing. So we'll scroll back down through uh, section five of the POH, and here we are at the landing distance. Pressure altitude once again. So this time we're at Hagerstown, and Hagerstown is at 703 feet. The altimeter setting at Hagerstown is 2985. So once again, we'll subtract that from the standard, and then we'll multiply it by a thousand, that's our conversion factor. So we'll add that to the field elevation to get a pressure altitude at Hagerstown of 773 feet. So the closest figure here is going to be the thousand foot. Now one thing to note here is that yeah, our weight is 2400 pounds, but guess what? There's no option to use anything other than max gross uh, for landing. So that's what we'll use and it's more conservative to assume a heavier aircraft anyway. So we'll use that max gross, we'll use a thousand feet. The temperature at Hagerstown is reported at 25 degrees. So we're going to be interpolating or we're going to be using the average between these two figures, 1325 and 1360. Well, 
Oop, I think I fell off the rails there somewhere with that one. Let's try it again. 1325 and 1360. 5x2 gives you 1342. That's our uh, required landing distance to uh, clear a 50 foot obstacle, get our wheels on the ground, and then get stopped. Now, do we need to make any changes to that is the question. So it says decrease distance is 10% for each nine knots of headwind. So let's see if we have any headwind. Winds are reported at 170 at 6. All right, that doesn't tell us anything unless we look at the runways. The runways at Hagerstown are runways 9, 272, two, and 20. So with winds out of 170, the best choice for the runway is going to be runway 20. Now the question is, how much of that 6 knots is a headwind? Okay, well, runway 20 and winds at 170 mean that we have a 30 degree uh, crosswind slash headwind component. So basically, or, or to, to put it more correctly, we have a 30 degree crosswind component. What that means is that half of the wind speed is going to be crosswind, which means that half of the wind speed is going to be headwind. You could use the E6B for this as well, but it's one of the nice things about having it in the useful information is that it's right there at a glance. So the wind 30 degrees off your nose means that it's not going to be six knots of headwind, it's going to be three knots of headwind. So let's look at our notes here. So if it were nine knots of headwind, we would take 10%. It's only a third of that. So we'll decrease the distance by 3%. So here's the distance we calculated, and we'll decrease that by 3%. So we'll basically take 97% of that to get 1302 so we don't need as much runway because we've got a little bit of wind in our face so landing to clear 50 foot obstacle we said 1302 and there we have it we have it the takeoff and landing performance then obviously we want to compare that and make sure that yeah of course we've got plenty of runway at both college park and hagerstown for that required takeoff and landing performance